Hi guys, welcome back. Are we feeling ready for another tournament video? I hope so because today's going to be a fun one, as always. But today's category is foundations and skin tints. I would have loved to have done separate tournament videos for both skin tints and foundations, but it just wasn't working out. This video concept actually works better with the more products I include, so I set it up in a way I think you guys are going to really enjoy, which you'll see in a second here. But before we get into it, I'd love for you to subscribe if you haven't already and let the tournament begin. So here's our beautiful bracket of the day. So as you can see on the left, I grouped together all of my skin tints, aside from the Makeup by Mario foundation. And on the right, I grouped together all of my foundations. So once we get to the center, you're going to be able to see what my top favorites are of each side. I know a lot of you would like to see some ranking videos again, and I'm thinking of doing that for mascaras because I only keep a few mascaras open at a time. So this type of video wouldn't work for that. So let me know your thoughts on that, but let's get back into the foundation and skin tints. Starting top left, we've got the MAC Studio Radiance Face and Body versus the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint. So these are very, very similar products as the packaging suggests. They both give a really nice healthy glow to your skin, a very dewy glow, and these also offer very minimal, minimal coverage. I would say you're able to get a bit more coverage out of the MAC Face and Body if you apply it with your fingertips. It almost emulsifies and unlocks more coverage when you do it that way. So this one is definitely more versatile and I find that this one wears better on my oilier complexion as well. It tends to have kind of a more grip to my skin whereas the Glossier feels kind of like a slippery oily type feel and I feel like it disappears on me throughout the day. This one does correct subtle subtle redness but not as much as the MAC. So MAC is going to win the first bracket. And there you go. Right below that, we've got the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter versus the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Perfector 4-in-1 Glow. So these are very similar products. You can both use them in a variety of ways, but you can also use them as like BB creams. Although they sound very similar, I see a pretty significant difference between them. First, talking about the Maybelline one, the packaging is a little bit of a pain in the ass, especially if you're going to be rubbing it all over your face. That can harbor bacteria quite a bit because you're using it on a bigger surface area. I don't mind this type of packaging for just like the under eyes or something, but if it's going everywhere, I feel like I have a bit of a problem with that. This also feels quite oily. It's odd. Every time I've used this and I've tried to layer other products on top, it makes all of those other products look like it's sitting on top of my skin. It never meshes in with everything else. It doesn't ever look cohesive and smooth. I always have issues. Although the glow is really, really pretty and I like the amount the applicator allows you to have on your skin, it applies a very thin amount, but enough that you would need. It's really pretty, but it just makes everything else work weird. I know for sure I prefer the e.l.f. Halo Glow over it. This one has quite a bit of a thicker consistency versus the Maybelline one here. This one has a thicker gel-like texture and it does have a bit more pearl too. So this one you need a little 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 amount of it which you'll see in my swatches. I used way too much of this product on my skin that day so it did not look very good compared to this one but if you use just a little bit it does offer a little bit of coverage and it really smooths your skin. It's gorgeous. I also love mixing this into foundations or using it as a highlighter or mixing it in with liquid blushes. It just creates magic. So e.l.f. is going to win this bracket. I also listed all of the shades I used in the swatches in the description down below just to help you guys out if you're interested in picking up any of these things. Moving below that, we've got the Rose Ink Skin Enhance Luminous Tinted Serum versus the Chanel Water Fresh Complexion Touch. So I fell head over heels for this product in 2022. It was almost all I was wearing in the beginning of that year. I still really enjoy this one. It offers the perfect amount of coverage for every day. I find it to be very flattering and blurring and it just wears amazingly on my oilier complexion. And then this one came around and I found that this one is a lot less fussy than the Rose Ink Skin Enhance. And I'll list a few reasons why this one is fussy. If you use too much, it just will never stick down to your face. So two pumps of this is the maximum. And you can't use a dampened beauty blender with this because it kind of rehydrates the product and it'll make it lift and you can never lay down more because then it'll rehydrate more surface area and then it's just going to be kind of a patchy mess. I I also found that I could only apply this in downward strokes. I can't do any buffing motions because that will make it kind of 
clump up a little bit, but I have not run into any of those issues with the Chanel one. I can just apply it with no hesitation and it's going to look completely flawless. I also enjoy how this one has quite a bit more coverage, so I don't need to use as much. I only need to use like one pump and it will cover my entire face. I probably would be able to get away with just half a pump. So this one is a lot better and I feel like it wears a lot longer on my skin as well. So Chanel is moving on to the next round. I know, shocking, but it is what it is. <laughs> We're looking good so far. So the last one on this side is the Iconic London Super Smoother Blurring Skin Tint versus the Fenty Beauty Ease Drops. And these are super, super similar products. They both offer kind of that blurring, beautiful, softening finish, and they both have kind of that soft matte look as well. It's very different from what we usually see from skin tints out there. Usually you're used to seeing that super dewy, like luminous glow. So this is kind of a breath of fresh air. So I was completely in love with the Fenty Beauty Ease Drops for years, I believe, until this one came around. And I feel like this one is more refined in the finish, and I feel like I can get away with using less of this one, and it's going to have a bit more coverage. And I just like the way that this sits on my skin better. I find that it blurs it out more, and it just wears a lot longer. I feel like sometimes it would be easy for me to get a mask-like effect with this one if I use just a little too much of it. Just over time, trying both of these out, I do prefer the Iconic Linden one. I still adore this one and I use it often. I just prefer this one just a touch more. So Iconic London is moving on. I'm now going to move over to the right side now just so that we can get this little section done. So now this is our first foundation battle. So we've got the Makeup Forever HD Skin versus the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. These are both very, very beautiful. The NARS one just makes your skin look so smooth and so luminous at the same time, which is really rare because sometimes with very luminous products, it's going to enhance some texture, whereas this one just really blurs out your skin. I just had issues with the undertones of these foundations. I never found my perfect match. I found the range to be very yellow or very, very pink so I actually had to purchase a few shades to be able to mix my perfect shade. So I do prefer Makeup Forever for their undertones. I feel like they've always nailed their undertones. They've had it in the bag for years. <laughs> I also think I prefer this foundation overall because it just always looks good on my skin. There hasn't been a time ever that this has disobeyed me. <laughs> it just is super, super reliable. It's one of the foundations I rely on most. I also enjoy how adjustable this one is. I can get a very sheer look or a very full coverage look and it's still going to look very skin like. I can also adjust its finish to make it look more matte, to make it look very dewy. It's compatible with anything I want that day. It's amazing. Makeup Forever is moving on to the next round. Sorry, NARS. Ooh, two other really good ones right below that. We've got the Dior Forever Skin Glow which is another one of my top, top favorite foundations, versus the Kosas Revealer Skin Improving Foundation. So these are both so stunning. Oh, I feel like this is kind of an easy one, but also a hard one. I would say that I have more consistent experiences with the Dior. This is one of my go-tos for events because I know it wears really well for huge days. It also looks good year round at any season, and it also looks amazing whatever condition my skin is in. If I'm breaking out, it looks awesome. If I have smooth skin, of course it's going to look great. It's just super, super reliable. I feel like I've said that a hundred times now. Whereas the Kosas one, it looks really, really beautiful when you first apply it, but I found a few times at the end of the day, it will look very grainy on my skin, almost like it had separated. And I feel like I can't get a very adjustable coverage level with this one. I feel like I'm always stuck with kind of a medium to full coverage look. Whereas this one, again, I can adjust it to get a sheer to full, full coverage look. So I guess that wasn't as hard as I was expecting. <laughs> Dior here is the winner. Below that, we've got the Lancome Care and Glow Foundation versus the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation, which is actually quite new to me. I'm wearing this one today. Yes, I'm not just wearing blush as foundation. I'm wearing a ton of blush today, but I have been testing this one out. It's my third time trying this foundation. I think it's stunning. I love how glowy it is. It's very skin-like though, and it stays looking the same all day. I've so far had a very positive experience with this one, but I do have more history with with 
the Lancome Care and Glow. They do give me very similar, similar vibes though. This one is honestly the same, 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 but just different brand. It gives me that beautiful glow with a good medium coverage effect. It also stays looking the same all throughout the day and it also collaborates well with anything else I put on top of it or underneath of it. It just is fuss free. So I'm going to put forward the Lancome Care and Glow just because I've been wearing this one for a few months now and I have such a short love story with this one so far <laughs> which is crazy i don't know where i've been yeah never had the estee lauder double wear i don't know we're pitting both of the Danessa Myricks foundations next. So the first one there is the Vision Cream Cover Foundation versus the Yummy Skin Serum Foundation. And I kind of have a sad story about the Yummy Skin. I think this one is stunning. You only need the tiniest amount and it covers a huge surface area. I love the packaging. It has like a little squishy middle here. So you just squirt some out. It's really, really fun. But this one breaks me out. And I know this one breaks me out because the next morning I wake up with these tiny little white pimples all over my face and I think it's because it's just too oily or something maybe too dewy so it just suffocates my skin when I wear it sadly this is one I think I'm going to have to discontinue using just for like the health of my skin but it is such a stunning effect it's so glowy I feel like if you had very dry skin your skin would love this <laughs> I think it would look beautiful but for me and my oilier complexion it's just too much so this one one is going to go forward. This is my favorite full, 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 full coverage foundation that I've ever tried. I actually usually cut this with something, most often the Glossier skin tint, just to make it more like a medium coverage foundation because if I just use this on its own, it's a little bit much. Like it just erases every feature I have, which if you wanna have that, sure, but <laughs> it's just a little intense for me. But it's great to adjust. It works really well with oils and other foundations. If you wanna thin it out, it's awesome. Highly recommend it if you want something so, so insanely pigmented. So yeah, Danessa Myricks Vision Cream Cover is winning. So now we're going to jump back to the left side. Now we have the MAC Studio Radiance Face and Body versus the e.l.f. Cosmetics Halo Glow Liquid Filter. So I would say, because I am just looking at this as foundations and skin tints, I use the MAC one much more often for that. Whereas I reach for the e.l.f. one a little bit more for like highlighting purposes or mixing purposes. I don't use it as often as a skin tint as I do with this one. So MAC is winning this section once again. Next up in the next bracket, we've got the Iconic London Super Smoother versus the Chanel. And Iconic London is winning here because it is more unique. I love its matte finish and it just wears so beautifully on my skin. It's, it's like unbeatable, honestly. I feel like this is going to go quite far. In this video. Now we haven't touched this section yet so we've got the Rare Beauty Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer versus the NYX Bear With Me Blurring Skin Tint. So these do offer kind of more of a blurred look as well. They're not as matte, they still have a little bit of a sheen. I haven't had the best experience with the NYX one but the day that I was swatching all of these foundations I thought it looked stunning. It was the first time it actually looked really really good on my skin. Usually this one has the tendency to highlight dry areas or it kind of can pick up on a lot of texture so I'm going to have to see if it was like the skincare I was wearing at the time because I just used these on bare skin while I was swatching all of these so I think maybe it might have been my skincare there so I'm going to have to give this more of a shot but I have had more history with the Rare Beauty one. I wore this so much last summer. It was so beautiful and it does have the inclusion of SPF and it does have that nice kind of smoothing effect but it also gives your skin a ton of glow and it just makes your skin look healthier. It's like my skin, but better. So this one is going to move on to the next round. There we are. Moving on to the next bracket, we've got the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Foundation versus the L'Oreal True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum. I was so excited to swatch these on both sides of my face to see how similar they were because in my mind, they have a lot of similarities. They both have a really nice pearlescence running through them. It's not a glitter, but it has a nice pearly sheen and they're both marketed 
as being very hydrating and glowy looking and they're very stunning. I would say that this is a lot more duifying, whereas this one is a lot more mattifying in a way. So this one might be better for those of you who have oilier skin and this one might be better for those of you who have dry skin. I've had amazing experiences with the Surreal Skin Foundation. It looks so nice. It just melts right in and it just enhances your skin so beautifully. Same with the L'Oreal. I feel super 50-50 on these two because these are products I both hold so much love for. I might have to sit here for a second. I don't know. I don't feel ready to disqualify one. I might have to go with undertones because that is one thing about the L'Oreal one. I'm not able to wear this one year round just because they don't have like the most extensive shade range. I wish they had more in between shades. Just for example, this one is 2-3 light. I wish that they had like one, two, three, four, you know, I wish they had a bigger shade range just because I find this one to be either way too dark for me or too light. And the shades on either side of these are way too pink for my skin tone. So I think Makeup by Mario is going to win solely for its undertones. This is one of the most perfect matches for my skin tone. When I put this on, it just looks like I'm painting a custom shade that Makeup by Mario made personally for me. That's what's going to tilt it to Makeup by Mario. Okay, we're looking good. Top four for skin tints and one foundation. <laughs> so now let's move on to over here. Oh my God, I didn't think this was going to happen. Okay, these are, I would say, my two top favorite foundations here. And I'm sad they're not going to be able to go more head to head later on in this video. This is difficult. Ooh, okay. So we've got the HD Skin from Makeup Forever versus the Dior Forever Skin Glow. I just love how beautiful and radiant this one is, but I can also achieve that look using this one. I use this one for events, but I also use this one for events. I tend to travel with the Makeup Forever one a bit more. Like I just went on my three week vacation with a few shades of this. So I feel like for that reason, this one's going to win, but that, that was hard. That is hard. Right below that, we've got the Lancome Care and Glow versus the Danessa Myricks Vision Cream Cover. Just because I go for the Lancome one more often, I think I'm going to push that one forward. I don't use the Vision Cream Cover that much, only when I want to have a very full coverage effect, which isn't that often. So Lancome is the easy win here. Moving below, we have our cream foundations. So one comes in a stick form and one comes in like a pan. <laughs> so we have the Westman Atelier foundation stick, which is stunning. So, so bougie. Just so much thought went into this product. It's such a stunning foundation. I would say you get kind of like a light to medium, more medium amount of coverage and it's stunning. It just looks gorgeous. It gives your skin so much dimension and glow and it just perfects it in the most perfect way. It's awesome. But I would say the same thing for the Patrick Tuff foundation. I've gotten along with this so well. I've also traveled with this one and I wore it so much when it first came out. I actually wear this more when I'm not filming, just because I know this one was kind of iffy for a lot of other people's skin types. But as you can see, I have hit pan on this one. I adore it. I find this one smooths out my skin so gorgeously. I don't need that much and it covers a big surface area of my skin. And I love, love, love the setting powder in here. It's so blurring. It just makes my skin look so diffused and airbrushed in all different types of lighting as well. So I think Patrick Ta is my winner here, surprisingly. I initially thought it was going to be this one, but because I love both sides of this foundation so much, oh, it's just, it's gotta go forward. Boop. Nice. And then in the last bracket here, these ones aren't very similar, but they didn't have a buddy. <laughs> So I've got the NYX Born to Glow Foundation versus the Armani Luminous Silk. I feel like I know which one is going to win here. And it's going to be the Armani Luminous Silk because this is another one of my go-to foundations and it has been for quite a while now. I just love how diffusing this one is. So it has essences of the Makeup Forever HD Skin just in its reliability. And it also has that smoothing and blurring effect that the Iconic London Super Smoother does. But
but it has the thinness like no other product here. It's so thin and fine and liquidy, but it covers so much and it just makes your skin look so diffused. If my skin is having textural issues, this is one that I reach for because I know it's going to soften it out and not attract any light to that area. It's just going to make everything look really gorgeous. The NYX Born to Glow foundation is so beautiful as well. It has beautiful coverage. It offers a stunning glow. It honestly feels more high end than a drugstore product, but yeah, this is really worth checking out as well. I just prefer the Armani Luminous Silk so much more over it. So here we are. Let's go back to the left side now. We've got the MAC Face and Body versus the Iconic London Super Smoother. I rotate through these two so often, so I feel like this is going to be hard. It almost feels like they're playing tug of war on my heartstrings right now. <laughs> they both offer very different finishes as well. One is super dewy, one is kind of more matte, but my gut is telling me to go with the Iconic London. Yep, interesting. So next up, we've got the Rare Beauty versus the Makeup by Mario. I almost said Makeup by Forever. <laughs> Ooh. These are also vastly different from one another. One is super pearly and glowy, whereas the other one is just very natural and kind of more blurry, more matte vibes. Hmm. But I kind of am feeling more for the Makeup by Mario, just because it's a bit more unique, I guess, and I do reach for it quite a bit more. When this foundation launched, it was all I was wearing. Every time I did my makeup, I didn't even look at my foundation drawer. It was everything. Now I'm kind of rotating a little bit more like usual, but it was just everything in my eyes at the time. So Makeup by Mario is winning. So now let's move back to the right side. We have the Makeup Forever HD Skin versus the Lancome Care and Glow. Again, Makeup Forever is winning here. There's not even a battle here for me. <laughs> here we are. And then below that, we've got the Patrick Ta Duo versus Armani Luminous Silk. Hmm. I would say I think Armani is going to take the W here just because I've had it for a few years and I know it's just going to always have a place in my collection. It's just one of those iconic products that is just incredible. And I feel like it's never going to ever get old. But the Patrick Ta is so stunning. I'm so sorry, Patrick. I just, I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. <laughs> Yes, I did watch um, Star Wars last night for Kylo, <laughs> of course. Um, <laughs> so here we are, we're getting close to the end. Ooh, what's it gonna be, what's it gonna be? So jumping back to the left side, we have the Iconic London Super Smoother versus the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin. And I know who's winning here, it's Iconic London. Let's not even pretend. <laughs> I don't even like that many iconic London products, but all my love for them went into this one product. It's just so, so good. <laughs> okay. And then moving on to the right. Ooh, difficult. <laughs> Very difficult. My gut is telling me makeup forever, honestly. Yeah, makeup forever again. They do amazing base products. Like their original HD Skin Foundation was what I had in my Makeup Artist Kit. It just works well with so many different skin types and their undertones are unmatched. It's just so reliable. And here we are, here is the finals. I think this is so interesting to look at. I love how it always ends up looking like a butterfly and I always love how I try to put off from the big decision. <laughs> Ooh, I don't want to, <laughs> but I think I know what I have to do. And the winner is, I feel like I need like a, a drum roll. It's so quiet in my office right now. It's like crickets. I don't even think I need to announce it. <laughs> Makeup Forever HD Skin is our winner. <laughs> I didn't know which direction this was going to go, but I, I don't feel that surprised by it. <laughs> Let me know if you predicted the winner of today's video. I just love doing these videos so much and I also love how they allow me to retry every single product in that category. It just helps me to refresh my mind on them and to see them visually next to whoever they're battling. It just 
is so I just love creating these videos for you guys and I'm so happy you love them as well let me know what category I should do next that is all for me today you guys thank you so much for watching I really hope you enjoyed today's tournament video if you did make sure to give this video a thumbs up I will also list and link all of these foundations and skin tints in the description down below so feel free to check that out and I'll see you in the next one bye guys